and welcome to blog number 43, me learning to play the melodeon. And this is kind of carrying on from blog 42, when I was dealing with the tune, the Grand Old Duke of York. Um, I said in that video that I was going to play it in the lower octave because I like the sound of the low notes and also it's easier. So it set me thinking, or perhaps I should learn it in the upper octave. Um, I'm doing it in the key of C. I actually need it in the key of G. Uh, to make it a good key for singing with the kids at school. However, I'm doing it in the key of C because I can show you the two octaves on this um, one row melodeum because this has got low notes so I can get down to those low notes uh, that give me the tune and also I can play the upper octave as well. Um, so anyway, at the beginning of the video there I was playing uh, the tune in the upper octave and the whole point of the melodeum is it's a bit like a harmonica in the sense that all the notes on the push, or if you like the, the blow, if you were playing a harmonica, they're all they're all notes that you find in the major chord. In this case, the key is C. So all the notes on the push, when you push the bellows in, are either uh, C or E or G. Um, and on the uh, the pull. They're all the notes that aren't found in those uh, in that major chord. Uh, so on the on the pull, they're all either uh, D's or F's or A's or B's. Um, so it's harder to play this tune in the upper octave because it stretches over five buttons. So in the version I played in the last blog, which is uh, the version that uses the lower octave. Uh, all the notes are found on these four buttons. So it's nice and easy. If you're using uh, one finger per button, that makes life really easy, doesn't it? But unfortunately, with the upper octave, we're using five buttons. In fact, we're using buttons four, five, six, seven, and eight. Uh, with the lower octave, we use buttons one, two, three, and four. So button four is common to both um, versions. Is that the uh, top part of the low octave version and it's the at the low part of the uh, upper octave version. Uh, so let's look at that up, upper octave version. It's exactly the same tune and you start on um, button seven and you've got the good the good thing about this is you've got the first two notes on the same button. You've got the E on the push and the D on the pull. So I tend to play that with the bellows rather than playing it uh, with individual button presses. I do it with the, the bellows in and out. And you've got C, G, E, C, G, uh, nicely positioned all in for um, four fingers, four buttons. That corresponds to the slight difference is on that version, the first two notes are on two different buttons here. The first two notes are on the same button, that makes it easier. By the way, it's worth mentioning that the left hand is the same for both the low octave version and the high octave version, which makes life fairly simple, doesn't it? So, now what I do there, I finish on that note C with my finger three, and then I surreptitiously move my second finger onto the same button for the next strike of C, next press of C, if you like because that's going to set up my new position because I'm going to need my little finger uh, for the F note which is on button 8. Um, so we've got C again and then I play that same button and the button above it um, so you've got the B and the D on the pull and we had it we had it there on the pull buttons 2 and 3 but here it's so the C is uh, button six, push, and then the B and the D, little harmony, is uh, that button again, with the button above it, button seven, to give you the D. So the, the B and the D notes, they're both on the pull. These fingers two and three. And then you push in button seven for the E. Okay, finger three. Now the next note is F uh, and we need uh, button 8 on the pull 
That's why we had to change the position. So use your little finger on that. See? And then you've got E, C, D, B, same two buttons. E and C on the push, D and B on the pull, and the buttons there are seven and six. And then pushing again for the C. So you go to button five for the G, finger one, up to the C, pulling the D and the B, and then you more or less repeat the earlier part. Because if you want to start again, well you've ended on the, the C with finger two, uh, I would suggest uh, putting your little finger on the E, the button above, to set up that nice four finger position. So basically the whole tune uh, stretches over five buttons, you've only got four fingers, you start off on those four buttons and then you move up So your little finger is available for that F note. So it is a bit confusing if you're uh, playing it uh, in the lower octave and then you jump to the upper octave. But if you learn it separately, maybe on different days, uh, it's not too bad to change that upper octave. I'm going to show you how I play it on a, another box in a moment, a three, a three row. Um, I'm only going to use one row to get the notes, but I'm going to do it on that box because it, it will give me the correct key that one, which is the key of G. Uh, this box, as I say, is the key of C. By the way, this tune uses all of the notes in the major scale of C, except for the A. Uh, it uses at some point C, D, E, F, G and B. It doesn't use an A, it doesn't use the sixth note of the scale. So it's all notes based uh, on the major scale, found in the major scale of C, except for the sixth note of the scale, which is A. <laughs> There we are in the key of uh, G on this G, C, F melodion um, and uh, I was playing all on one row there so essentially you know it could have been a uh, one row melodion in the key of uh, G. Uh, the left hand, I'll just coming a bit close on that show you that because I mentioned this a bit on the uh, last bar but didn't demonstrate it so I've got G bass and G uh, major chord there. So two, bu uh, two buttons nearest the chin. Same two buttons pulled out give you the D bass D chord. Now to get the C, uh, what I'm doing there is I'm dropping to the two buttons nearest the floor and pulling out. Now I can get the same effect by pushing in on those two buttons but I need to, I'd need to change row to do that. So I'm trying to keep it all on one row. So it means a jump. So you're doing the G chord, D chord, G chord, C chord, G, D, G. So it's that jump down to that. Uh, but that's the same as uh, if you were on a, a one row melodion in the key of G, it would be those bass notes, um, bass chords would be all in a row. On this particular one, you've got to jump down um, to get that C bass and C chord. Uh, but that's in the correct pitch uh, for the kids to sing. My pitch is Oh, the grand, oh, the grand old Duke. Have you got the kids? It's an octave higher than me, so that's the correct pitch and the correct key for them to sing in. So I hope you found that interesting. That's how you play uh, the Grand Old Duke of York in the upper octave. So really, with a bit of practice, uh, there's nothing to be scared of, is there? Hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you in the next blog.